Hey, it's Bullfrog here. I am real excited to have y'all along with me. I'm about to go out on a solo camping trip here on the edge of the Osceola National Forest. And this time, you've, you've seen me go into the Ocala National Forest with tent, sleeping bag, you know, standard camping gear. This time I'm going out, no tent, no sleeping bag, no sleeping pad, no water, no food, no bug repellent. Uh, I'm just going out with my tools, everything that I think I need to survive and flourish out here. We're going to put that to the test. And uh, before I go out, I want to go over my gear, both for myself to make sure I have everything I want, and for you to see what I'm taking with me. And um, I think this is going to be a going to be an interesting trip. Uh, do follow along. Uh, let's get started looking in my bag here. Actually, let's look at my bag first. This is the bag I'm taking out with me. Uh, this is actually a bag that is made uh, by a local company called Phoenix Infinitum. That's Phoenix Infinitum. I'll put the name down at the bottom here. And um, sold through a local um, tactical supply shop. And the fella uh, is a vet who, who makes this bag by hand. So I thought that was pretty neat. And this is a really fine made bag. I've been using it now on uh, some camping trips. I've, I've been doing a lot of solo camping that I haven't been filming. Um, you know, but it's, you know, standard solo camping tent, you know, sleeping bag, all that stuff. Um, so that's why I'm going to film this one for you without all that stuff. Because you've already seen me do that. I really like it. I like how it's built. I like how it's laid out. Let me show you what I got in it. And first, let me start on the outside here. My tools. I have a spade here. It's a little garden spade or garden trowel. I uh, picked it up for a few bucks at a local hardware shop. Lately, I've been using this for a Dakota fire hole. I really like the Dakota fire hole system. Uh, it is a fantastic way to have a little cooking fire where all you got around you are little twigs. So, um, so I, I carry this with me now regularly. This is my bush knife. This is a Kershaw camp knife. And what makes this knife my go-to knife it's basically a machete, but yet it is also thick and gives you a little bit of functionality similar to a hatchet. Florida is unfortunately kind of an in-between place between uh, eastern, um, you know, kind of eastern deciduous forest and subtropical and tropical jungle. We got both here in Florida on the peninsula, and so. Um, it's a place where you can find good use for a machete and also a place you can find good use for a hatchet and sometimes you want both with you and um, it's not really convenient to bring both. Um, this, this little blade here has enough weight to it I can chop firewood with it pretty effectively as, as if it was a little lightweight hatchet and yet when it comes to uh, cutting um, soft vegetation this this excels at it like a machete does so this is my go-to knife now there is a reason I'm doing this camping trip in uh, private land in that borders public land instead of the actual public land and the reason for that is hunting seasons are closed right now on public land all throughout the state there's a couple places in south florida you can go hog hunt year round but this is not one of those places and i want to be able to have the option to do some hunting or at least if i see a target of opportunity i can take it rabbit is open right now rabbits open year round um uh, raccoons, possums, a lot of little varmints, hogs are always open year round. So um, here on private land, I might be able to walk up on a rabbit. I might be able to even see a hog. And I want to have the option to take it down um, if, if given the chance. And so I'm bringing this little uh, 22 with me. This is actually my wife's. This is, goes in my wife's bug out bag. It's called the Little Badger. There's a lot of reviews of this on YouTube. And um, uh, here's the, my think, take on this gun. It's not as accurate as I wish it was. Um, it's very um, bullet picky. I'm shooting um, CCI mini mag hollow points out of it. It likes those pretty well. And this is one of the best hunting rounds you can have in 22, anyhow. But I also like really like subsonics because they're quiet. And this gun does not shoot subsonics well at all. Uh, any subsonic I've tried at least. But I love the trigger on it. One thing about the, the trigger is it's so light. You can just sit here and just hold it in your open palm. 
and hold the gun real light and barely squeeze the trigger and it's it's so light that um, you won't yank it off target and you need that for a little little light survival gun like this the gun is not as accurate as I wish it was but I, it's so compact it kind of makes up for that just folds right down I keep it in this top pouch in my bag right here and have it when I need it oh yeah one other thing about it it lets you clip um, bullets on to it down here don't rely on this they, they come out pretty easy I have found that whether you have it in the bag or when you're walking around with it you can bump these bullets out so do watch it I do have down in here um, some extra extra bullets that I have just a little little plastic um, pill container here I think I have total 12 here and 10 in there on the outside of my bag I have my tool compartment where I keep all my little gadgets um, I have my fishing kit you've seen this fishing kit before this is a little Shakespeare uh, collapsible um, rod and reel I have a four pound test line on it now understand you know in a real survival situation you want the heaviest line you can get away with because you never know you might snag up with a big 10 pound catfish um, you know running a trot line somewhere but I pretty well know my fish where I'm going to be at and for the most part I'm going to be dealing with very small fish of the woods that aren't going to get much bigger than that so I can get away with the four pound test that lets me cast lighter baits lighter lighter lures and, um, and little lighter hooks out there uh, this is my little fishing kit again you've seen it before I have just a cork in here a stringer uh, extra hooks and sinkers I've got my bait, my Berkeley Power bait that I know the fish up here like. Now I have two tool kits here. Uh, this first one I got off of eBay and it's actually made for an Alice pack uh, with little Alice clip attachments in the back. And this is where I keep my some of my, my camera gear, like my recharging ba um, battery packs here. And then uh, these, are, these are 11 solar powered battery packs. Got them on um, Amazon. And then the power cords here. I have um, batteries for my GoPro in here. Here is kind of my, my basic essential tool kit. I'm going to zoom in on this for you. All right, I got this little bag off of um, Amazon. And I don't remember the brand. I'll flash it down at the bottom here when I edit the video. And it attaches through um, Molly straps. And it is a great little tool bag here, just for keeping all my little essential items. I got a lighter with me. I've got a little magnesium fire starter kit. This is a real old one I found in some of my camping gear when I was getting ready for this. And I said, hey, I'll try this old one. See, I scraped a little bit off of it. It seems to work okay. Not as good as it should. I don't remember if this is one of the little cheap Harbor Freight ones or where this came from, but it, it, it will function. I got my Kershaw Clash pocket knife here. Um, this is just a little tamper for my tobacco. Um, flashlight, this is a Phoenix, a Phoenix LD20. I love this little light. Got a um, needle and thread. I do actually use this in the woods um, when I, say, tear up something on my tent. Um, I've never had to use it on my bag yet. I have used it on my Alice pack, uh, but I usually do that kind of heavy sewing at home, but I always have it with me just in case I need it. Got a little multi-tool. This is a cheap multi-tool. It's a little Ozark Trail, you know, Walmart special. Um, but I only got it for $2.50 on sale at Walmart. It, I do use this a lot, uh, so it's handy. I'm not someone who's really into multi-tools. I never have been. It's something my family never really uses. So it wasn't something I saw a lot of growing up. But, um, you know, this one has been handy enough that it makes me want to invest in a real good one like a nice Leatherman one day. But for right now, this one serves a purpose, serves its purpose. And um, this is just a little flashlight cover. This is more for when I'm hunting, varmint hunting. Put that on your flashlight. Most, most varmints can't see red light. So that's what that's for. Now, on the outside here, I got a little Ravenac reading light. Normally this is my tent light when I'm out tent camping. Uh, you can clip it on things, but I recently broke the clip off of it. But I found that it works really good just leaving it in the pack here. And um, works as a little little utility light. Like at night, 
I can just open up my toolkit here and just bend it all around and look look at what's going on. Got my water filtration system. This is a little Sawyer system. You've seen it before. A little uh, squeezy pack. I carry this just to backwash my water in case stuff gets um, clogged up in here. And that it does happen in the woods where if you're uh, trying to filter water with a lot of sediment in it, you will clog this up quick. So you want to pre-filter it if you can. And you want to at least get enough clean water out of it that you can then turn around and then backwash it with the clean water in case, uh, in case it does get clogged. Put those back. Now in here, got some rope. This is what I use to filter, pre-filter water. If there's a lot of sediment in it, this is just coffee filters. Now these are very fine coffee filters and in the future after I use these up, I'm gonna get some coarser ones. Uh, these filters are so fine that water drains through them really, really slow. And um, in fact, you might be able to use them for some basic uh, water filtration if you didn't have a filtration system. I don't know, uh, but it's so slow, they're not really practical for what I want them for, which is just to quickly get the sediment out so I can then stick them through the Sawyer filter. So I'm gonna use these up and then get some, some coarser ones. Um, rope, paracord, cord, um, bits of cord. Um, so I have, uh, an abundance of rope here that I suspect I'll be using for making my shelter. Oh, got my little eating utensils. I do take these with me. Uh, these are titanium. They're so light, they're no, there's no reason not to take them with me. They're Sea to Summit, and I use them all the time. They've been great. I've been using them, I think, for two years now. So, um, so those go with me. Okay, let's close this back up. Put our gun back. Okay. Okay, now I want to go inside my main pack, show you what's in it. And actually, there's not a lot in it. Okay. I've got um, a little bag here with miscellaneous items in it my pipe tobacco and. Um, my pipe, that's just a comfort item I am gonna bring with me. My GoPro, little tripod for the GoPro, little bag of memory cards so I don't run out of space filming. Um, my headlight, a um, body strap for the GoPro, rain poncho, this is just a old US military surplus rain poncho, had it for years. Toiletries bag, which all it's going to include for this trip is just a little bit of toilet paper and some soap. My pot. Normally I keep an alcohol stove in here, but there's nothing in here except a cup. So, so I got my pot. This is a GSI Outdoors pot. Got this from my local Gander, Gander Mountain um, when it was on sale, and I love it. Great little pot. Head strap for my GoPro. This actually isn't going with me. I'm glad I found it. This goes to my scope. I was out doing some hunting last night and popped that off my scope. I'll put that aside. And then I've got my hex suit that I keep strapped in here. I have been using the hex suit a lot since the spring and I am so convinced it works that I'm actually going to carry it with me in case I do any rabbit hunting. Uh, I'm absolutely convinced it'll help me move around a little bit more and my movements not get as noticed. So um, I am going to have, it's also very lightweight and if I get hot I can always put the hex suit on, just wear the hex suit, nothing else. And it, because it's mesh it will, you know, I can feel the breeze blow through it, it'll wick moisture off of me so it's pretty good. The final thing I have in here behind my hex suit is a platypus hydration bladder. Uh, it's two liters. It has no water in it right now, but this is what I'm going to use to store my water when I get out in the woods. I'll just filter the water, stick it in the platypus, and I'll always have it with me here. So that's everything that's in my pack. The last thing for me to show you now is what I'm going to be just carrying on my person, which is basically going to be my clothes. I got an additional knife in my pocket and my firearm. All right, first and foremost, there's nothing too terribly special 
about what I'm wearing except when I get to my boots, and I'll talk about them in a minute. Uh, my hat is going to be my old hillbilly hat you've seen me wear before. I don't wear this on camera much, but this is actually the hat that I really, I'm not wearing this to ham it up for the camera. This is the hat I really wear most of the time um, that I've worn for many, many years when I'm out hunting. Usually I, I take it off when I'm in front of the camera and you'll see me, my hair will be a little messed up and everything. But this is my, my standard woods hat. I prefer a wide brim hat because I can keep the rain and the sun out of my face and I can, um, if I get hot, dip it down in some water and then let it evaporate off my head and help me keep me cool. Uh, one thing you need to know about a wide brim hat when you're trying to hunt with one is that the brim, of, brim around your ears will change the way sound comes to you and usually muffle some of the sound. You flip it up like that, it actually lets the sound get to your ears better. So you'll see sometimes on a few hunting videos, you might catch me with my hat like this or kind of crumpled up and that's just me getting it out of my ears so I can hear better. But most of the time I just keep it flipped up like that, like it that way. Wearing my shirt is just a generic 90% um, cotton t-shirt. Uh, it's kind of light, you know, it's not as, not as cool as I would prefer it to be, but it's what I got. My pants are nothing special. This is just some camouflage pants I bought at Walmart. They're baggy on me. Uh, the only thing I really look for in camouflage is that it be out, out, made out of material that's quiet so that when you move in it and it wrinkles up, it doesn't make a lot of noise like a pair of blue jeans does. Uh, that's just a hunting consideration so I can walk around in them quiet. Um, I buy them usually on sale at Walmart at the end of hunting season. They'll mark their hunting supplies way down just to clear them out of the store. You can get camo real cheap that way. Are these hyper durable pants? No, they're not. I usually have to replace them every couple years. But when you know when they're marked down 75% at Walmart, you can go in and buy five pairs at a time and just keep them put up. Here's what is important: my boots. I'm wearing snake boots. The number one danger out here besides fallen limbs and lightning strikes are venomous snakes. They're all over the woods. You cannot take for granted that A, you'll be able to see them even if you're looking for them. Um, if that was the case, then you would have to conclude that their camouflage is poor, and it's not. They're some of the most well camouflaged animals on earth, both in terms of their coloration and their ability to adequately use their coloration. It's as if they understand that they're camouflaged and they know how to use it to their maximum advantage. So you may overlook a snake even if you're looking for them. Uh, you cannot presume that they'll leave you alone if you leave them alone. Um, people will say that because it sounds politically correct, like, oh, you, you know, no animal in and of itself would ever hurt a person uh, on its own accord. Now, I don't think snakes are, they're, they're definitely not out to get you in terms of, I've been, should have been bit so many times and haven't been. At the same time, they know they're venomous. They will stand their ground against you, and they um, they will on occasion come to you. You can be sitting on the ground, and the snake may start 20 yards away, and he will come to you to check you out for reasons only the snake knows. I, I have seen it happen. I've got it on video. Uh, I have an instance where one crawled up between my legs where I was bow hunting, and uh, I, I had a, a moccasin do that to me on the water uh, about a year and a half ago. Uh, where I was right wading some water at night and it came out from about 15 yards away and slowly swam up to me and then got within what would have been striking distance and then shot right on past me. He, he didn't try to bite me, but he wanted to check me out real close. And I can tell you, I ain't going to trust the good graces of the snake that every time that happens, it ain't going to bite me. 99% of the snakes you may deal with may not want to bite you, but the one that does is the one that will kill you. So wear some snake boots, wear something that will give you some protection. If something that's not snake graded, at least something that is thick and will give you some protection up to about knee level. This is for the two-legged snakes. I've got my Smith & Wesson M&P Compact 9mm and um, I'll just be wearing this on my uh, waist belt on my backpack and a little quick release holster here and um, 
just nice to have with you for extra security. Um, you, you never know, uh, like on even this is, though this is private land, we have a lot of trespassers on this land and you never know when one's gonna have bad intentions towards you. So you wanna carry something with you. Here's what's in my pocket. This is just a little pineal, if I said that right, one of the little French made pocket knives. Uh, so actually this is a little antique one here family heirloom but it's very lightweight so I carry it with me in my pocket just because it's no burden in my pocket don't even think about it being there and that gives me two good pocket knives and a big bush knife to work with out there and that should be plenty for what I need okay you've seen my gear I'm going to um, repack and get ready and hit the woods and it's a feels like about noontime right now I'll check the clock in just a little bit noontime one o'clock somewhere in that range I'm going to get geared up and I'll see you in the woods.